Hello, welcome to Pride of London Fan TV. Ali here, bringing you my match review of the game at Ellen Road between Leeds United and Crystal Palace, which of course finished 2-0 to Leeds. It felt a little bit like a car journey when you were younger, when you keep asking your parents, how long till we get there? Well, that's how I felt in the second half as I waited for the final whistle. Absolutely dire, utter dross. Let's get into it. All the usual features, starting with Roy's waiting. Right, I'm going to give Roy a 2 out of 10. Um, beginning of the team selection, I think a lot of Palace fans were quite intrigued with PVA on the left-hand side in a more attacking role. And it was really interesting to see that as that was announced. But I don't really feel it's a fair way to assess it because I think the whole team shape was wrong today. And let's get started on that. Let's get started on Eze. Out wide again. Now, I said before the game that without Wilfred Saha, we should be playing our biggest hand, Eze, in his natural position. Let's have everything through him. Let's let him dictate it. Let's let him be the main man. As QPR fans would tell us that that is his actual position in a more advanced role through the middle. But he played him on the right-hand side today. Now, Leeds United have some very good wide attacking players, Rafinha being one of them. And also their defenders also bomb on. So inevitably, as they spent much of the game tracking back or being very bad at tracking back and not getting in any areas that would actually hurt Leeds. And when he did take a more central role in the second half, lo and behold, we started to tick a little bit more. So that's my first real gripe with Roy's selection today. And I continue to believe that shunting Eze out in a wide role is the worst use of a creative player since Sven shunted skulls on the left-hand side all those years ago. Next up, Jordan Ayew has two really good games on the right-hand side. What happens? He puts him out front. Now, I get it. Saha is out. So, you have to feel that void. But you've got Benteke, you've got Batshuayi on the bench. Jordan Ayew is finally building some momentum in the season. And he changes his position. Cahill and Dan together as centre-halves. Well, I've said it in previous videos. I've said it in the previous video. Watching them together isn't great. It feels a little bit awkward. A little bit like watching Take That Dance these days. Good players in their day. But you can't play them together. They lack pace now. But he plays them against a high-intensity team like Leeds United. And who would have predicted that that wouldn't go well? Within a few minutes, we were obviously losing. Um, Harrison scores. Now, people can say it's lucky, it, it, it's a deflection. But for me, Leeds got what they deserved. They started the game with a high intensity. And we didn't close Harrison down anywhere nearly good enough. And then the second goal... We got nowhere near Patrick Bamford when he got the rebound. Um, and that's what happens when you play two centre-halves who lack pace like that. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, they lack mobility. The dinosaurs at Crystal Palace Park have more mobility than those two. And it, it's like sending Pat Butcher and Mrs Doubtfire into a Mrs World competition. You know, the outcome was never going to be very good. So there we go. Uh, the last point, a couple of points I want to make, is in his pre-match conference, Roy talked about how Gyro Riddleworld needed to watch Luka Milivojevic and MacArthur to see what more of what they do. Well, what's that? Giving the ball away? Because Luka Milivojevic gave the ball away for most of the game. I think maybe, you know, also he talked about how hard it is for Gyro to break into the team. Now, Jairo Riddle would actually bring something different to the team. He actually has an eye for a part. So, actually, Roy, it should be quite easy for Jairo to break into this team. I won't hold my breath in him keeping his place. I'm sure James McArthur and Luca will be our centre of trauma midfielders again very, very soon. Last gripe with Roy. As you can tell, I have given Roy praise in the last two videos that I've done, but I'm just finding it hard to be positive today, like many fans. We've got a Category A. Academy. Now, I know it's difficult at the moment with bubbles and things like that with COVID for an academy player maybe to come into the first team bubble, but Roy did talk about it as a possibility in his pre match conference. Leeds United had a young player on their bench today. So, what an invaluable experience it would be, for example, for a young centre half to watch Gary Cahill, a European Cup winner, prepare for a game. You, you listen to ex professionals, they always say those first few times, even as an unused sub are 
as a young player is such an invaluable experience. Let's give one of our young players an invaluable experience. Now, I do, like I say, get the difficulties. If someone comes into the first team bubble, then it's going to take a while for them to go back into the academy bubble and they may miss some big games because they might need to isolate from the academy players. But that invaluable experience that I'm referring to could be so crucial in the development of our young players, but, but no. So there you go. Uh, it is what it is. We've got Roy. He, he does have his positives, as I've, I've said in previous videos. But today, I felt there were many, many points that he that you can criticise Roy for. And but we go onwards. We do go onwards. We've got uh, some games coming up that are very winnable. We've got, of course, on Saturday Burnley. What a thriller that will be! And uh, Burnley at home, and then we've got obviously uh, Brighton and then Fulham. So we could get ourselves back into it. And whilst there's a difference in class today between us and Leeds, the difference in points isn't that high. So we can get chasing that top 10, but I'm not thinking we'll get top 10, but it's still within sights at the moment, I think, bearing in mind our fixtures coming up. Let's get into the man of the match. The man of the match for me, I can't choose a Palace player. And it's sad to be back here because in the last two games, it's been hard to choose a, uh, a Palace player because there were many, many options. But today, I don't, I can't think of one who really deserves man of the match. If you think of one, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to give it to a Leeds player, Rafinha, a very exciting young prospect, someone I think we will be learning more about. And to be fair to Leeds, they played very well today from the outset. As I said, they forced the issue and were the better team today. Lots for us to be looking at then. Let me know in the comments below. Are you, what the big debate amongst Palace fans at the moment, 4-4-2 or 4 2 3, one What do you think it should be? Should Eze be playing in a central role? Can we, without Wilfred Saha, get a result? Two wins in 19 games now without Wilfred Saha. Can we turn it around? I think we can. If we use the team and players we've got properly, if we start making Eze the man, main man through the middle. But I'm not holding my breath. That Roy will do that. As always, let me know your thoughts below. Who was your man of the match? And as always, please press that subscribe button if you like what you have seen. See you next time. Hopefully a bit more cheerful. Palace Burnley.